Hi and welcome to the video. Uh, we're going to be running through the map with Essentials 180 hoist, just a few of the features and functions of the hoist. Uh, manufactured in our Magworth factory, uh, it's an Essentials 180. The 180 is the weight limit, uh, so it's 180 kilo weight limit this one. The Essentials range we have is our ec economic range. Um, so we try to get as many features as we can into the hoist without increasing the cost to the person buying it. Um, so some of the features, the heights and the, the measurements that we have, the lowest point of the carry ball, which is at the moment, um, is 382 millimetres from the floor. The maximum height when the carry ball is at full height, which I'll show you a little bit later on in the video, uh, is 1,740 millimetres. For a, an economy hoist, we also have electric legs. So instead of the manual operating legs that you'd normally find with a hoist in this price bracket, uh, we actually have electric operating legs on this one and obviously it's got an electric up and down. Just pop that on there. If I turn the hoist around so you can see the back of the hoist, we've got the Linac standard control box. Um, very good, very reliable. It has a removable battery so the batteries can be interchanged if required and off-board charging is available. Although most of our customers prefer onboard charging which is done from a socket underneath the control box it's plugged in directly to the wall which will then give you a couple of lights on the first light says on and that's to tell you there's power coming from the socket the second light which is orange will light if it's actually receiving charge uh, one of the things I will point out here is the emergency button a lot of people mistakenly think that that's an on and off switch they then go to plug the hoist into charge and it doesn't actually accept any charge. This button's for emergencies only. We'll talk about that a bit more in a little while. So to charge it, you just plug it in. What we've also added on this is an extra piece of cable that's fitted underneath the control box. It's wired in at the back and the actual unit is plugged in here instead of plugging directly in. So if I turn this round and pop it in as it's supposed to be in position here what that means is if it's plugged in and a carer forgets and walks off down the corridor the hoist will disconnect you won't damage the socket you won't damage the hoist unit and you're not left with potentially bare wires plugged into the mains left for somebody to go and touch and pick up so we've put this little feature in there just to protect the hoist the property and obviously the people using it as well so I'll leave that on there for now, Take it over the top. Whilst I'm down here, we'll talk about the control box. We've already mentioned the two lights underneath, one for on, one for charge. We also have an emergency lowering function on there. So if I take the handset and operate the hoist in the up position, the hoist is now going up. The emergency stop function there will deactivate all functions on the hoist. If you twist to release it, it pops back out and we can then operate the up, the down and the leg open and close as well. We'll all operate now that that's in the open position. Now if for some reason the handset was to stop working, the client has a dog that chews it, runs off down the street with it, you run over the cable, whatever happens to it, if you damage it in any way and you've got somebody up in the air, there is an emergency override underneath the emergency stop switch it says emergency, there's a down arrow and a little hole. So if I get a pen and pop it into that hole, it will actually operate the down switch without me pressing the handset. So when you've hoisted somebody up in the air, if the worst happens and the handset breaks, you've always got a method of getting somebody down again. If I stand back up here and turn the hoist around to show you there, the emergency override here operates via the battery. So if I remove the battery, that function ceases to work, as does the handset. So what we also have, if I take the hoist up a little bit higher, just so you can see, the red toggle on here, if we turn the disc around, we can actually slowly wind the hoist down manually. So again, without having to press the down function, we can just wind somebody down in an emergency to get them back into their chair onto the bed somewhere safe. If we put a new battery on at that point, 
the power reactivates. There is no reset procedure. You can literally wind it down and then instantly go back to using the handset. So if you need to show somebody that feature, don't worry about having to go through a whole reset procedure to get the handset to work again. As long as it's plugged in and powered, the handset will operate. So on the hoist itself, if we start from the base, we have 75mm casters at the front, 100mm casters at the back. The reason we put smaller casters on the front of this unit is because it makes it easier going underneath certain beds. If you have a bed with a centre bar, sometimes with the, the bigger casters, the beds impede the use of the hoist and the hoist runs through and hits the bed and you can't get it into position. So we've gone for a, a lower profile front caster, but we've got the larger casters on the back to make it easy to move over carpets and the brakes are also featured on the back casters, one on each side, which you can operate and just remove with your feet. You can actually do it with your fingers as well if you need to, but most people would do that with their feet. The actuator in between those two casters is what will operate the leg opening. So that will operate the leg function. If I turn it around, you'll see the legs get into their widest position there. So the widest position for the legs is 1,176 millimetres wide. When it's in its closed position, it'll be 601 millimetres. All of this technical information you can find on Prison Medical's website, prisonmedical.co.uk. If we move to the front now, so we've got the boom, the carry bar comes with a cover, a Velcro cover which goes onto there just to protect the user's head, uh, makes it a bit softer. If you undo the Velcro you can take that cover off completely so if you need to put it in a washing machine it can be washed up to 72 degrees, uh, can be tumble dried on a low heat if you need to get it back on there quickly as well. And as you'll notice we use the hook style carry bar not the clips and this hoist will be compatible with any loop style slings. So any slings with a loop, not the clip system, any slings with a loop are compatible with this, this hoist. They don't necessarily have to be manufactured by Mackworth. Um, for example, Prism have three ranges of slings. All three ranges are compatible with this hoist. 